Hello, I'm Edward Snow, and uh, welcome to my channel. I'm uh, down here along the Matanuska River this evening, and I'm going to take some uh, series of pictures. I'm going to try to make a panel. I love taking panels, stitch it together with my Fujifilm 50S2. Um, I'm normally a Nikon shooter. I still have my Nikon equipment. But I'm trying this camera out now, see uh, if I like it or not. So I am going to be setting it to a. This is a 35 to 70 millimeter lens that's on here, and I'm setting it at f32, ISO 100. That's the lowest it will go, and I don't need it. See here. Shutter speed. I'm going to set it at first of all, I'm going to set my aperture at F twenty two. Okay. So that means my shutter speed is a third of a second. The reason why I'm going at uh, 35 millimeter is probably a 28 millimeter equivalent in a full frame camera is I want to get the river and the mountains and the clouds. The clouds are kind of nondescript right now. It's, there's definition in them, but there's no real color. But I'm hoping the color will come here in a few minutes and uh, it, it will turn out nice. So as it is, I don't have to do a panel because I see a wide enough uh, view of this mountain range. Let me uh, show you what I'm looking at. if you can see that or not that's Pioneer Peak way off in the distance that's uh, just there Pioneer Peak and then we got the twin sisters over here okay so that's what I'm going to take a picture of I'm getting a little bit of yellow in the clouds right now but, um, it's not real vibrant, and I'm hoping it will be. I've had some very vibrant pictures. In fact, I might share those with you, some of the ones I've taken in the past when I process this video, uh, and show you what kind of pictures I've been able to obtain while I've been here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take this first picture. like to take and look at it and see what it looks like. Yeah, it looks okay. But I would like it to be a little bit darker, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to manual. Okay. And I'm going to go down to a second instead of one and a third seconds. Let's see how that looks. I'm still getting some blown out highlights. So I'm going to take that even up farther. Let's try it 15th of a second. Oh, that's more dark and moody. Now I'm losing all detail on the foreground. But I bet, I bet I'll be able to bring that back. I'd rather underexpose it some and pull it out then overexpose it where you, you don't have any chance of restoring any detail whatsoever. So 15th looks a little bit dark so maybe I will go with a tenth of a second. Yeah that looks a little bit better. So here we go.
initial picture. Now I have to wait to see. The sun's just getting ready to set on the horizon to my right here. And uh, I'm hoping as it sets, we have some clouds obscuring the sun right now. So we might not be sending a lot of good light out. But I'm hoping there's enough diffuse light that'll light up these clouds over here. And uh, it'll look really nice. What I could do is I could do a panel of this whole mountain range. This is the Chugach mountain range from down there by the Knick Glacier all the way up to Pioneer Peak. And that's where I'll get my panel. That looks really nice. I hope that turns out okay. So, I, uh, I'm really impressed with the, the Fujifilm 50S II. Uh, I bought it used by most of my equipment used. Very seldom do I buy equipment that's uh, brand new. I just don't have it in the pocketbook, you know, finances. But I did buy a new Nikon Z9 and a 500, 500 milliliter f5.6 pf lens which i've been trying out i'm also shooting with the sony i have the sony 200 to 600 and i purchased a used but new for me um, a9 and uh, the reason why is i also get into bird and wildlife and nature photography you know mammals and birds and stuff like that and I've heard great things about the A9 and that lens, 200 to 600. So I think I'm pretty complimented with my Nikon gear, with this Fuji camera, and the Sony system that I have. So I'm shooting, and I have other camera systems. I have some Olympus, I have a red um, Scarlet One, and I, I have some you know, video cameras. But, uh, I'm pretty much set to do whatever I need to do to produce videos. I'm not saying this to, to take and brag or anything like that. It's taken me a long time to acquire these things, but I see them as tools that will help me in situations that I might need. Of course, my passion is wildlife and nature photography more than anything else. I love landscapes, but I also love macro photography. And uh, so that's why I'm out here tonight is because of this beautiful landscape. I feel very blessed and lucky to be here uh, in Alaska and to be able to live by the Chugach Mountains. Uh, you know, in fact, there's three mountain ranges that come together here. We've got the Talkeetna Range, the Manahuska Range, and the Chugach Range. And they all come together and converge here in Palmer, Alaska, and I feel very blessed to be here and be able to share this with you. Uh, God's creations are just wonderful, and uh, I hope you appreciate it as much as I do. Well, the light's starting to fade. Let me show you this. It's not very vibrant, but I'm going to hang on here for a few minutes or more and hopefully we'll have something or oh, something will be made of this. Uh, I'm hoping for some red hues. Let's uh, hope and see. Clouds are looking awesome. They really are. And by underexposing a little bit, it really makes those clouds come out and really pop. And I use Lightroom. They have a, a linear 
graduation tool built within that program and I'm able to go in and bring the foreground into exposure, the same exposure as the sky and vice versa. And I really appreciate that tool. Out of any of the tools in uh, Lightroom Classic, that's probably the one tool that I use the most. I use a, the radiant tool or radial tool sometimes, like I have individual trees that I want to be lit, lit up to mirror what I see, but uh, I don't use that as much as this, the linear graduation tool. Very dark and moody and broody. Let's see. It's the nice thing about this Fuji camera, of course, you can't do it right now because I have movement in the water, but it has this ability to. Uh, I call focus stacking or a pixel shift pixel shift and it will take a series of images shifting the imager uh, like every so slightly and it'll produce a larger image for you I think that's really nice of course for landscape photography you know you can't control the wind, you can't control the water, there's a lot of variables in there and you have to know when to use it. Now if you're taking the Grand Scenic and there's not a lot of wind or anything like that, that might be beneficial. But uh, Knowing that I have that ability is really nice and I really appreciate that. Okay, the clouds are going to uh, kind of a yellow, so I'm going to take another image here. One thing I would like to get through this Fuji is get a remote release for it. Uh, I'm still looking into the system. I'm not sure if they have a remote release or not. I'm sure they do, they probably do. And I don't like touching the camera because of the camera shake. But uh, as I get into the system, uh, I'll gradually get those things that I need. So far, the images I've uh, taken with it uh, have been wonderful, and I'll share those with you as well in this video. Well, I don't know that there's much hope left. The yellow is starting to fade in the clouds. It looks like my day's coming to an end. But uh, if I get some red here, then uh, I'll share that with you. If not, uh, this is Edward Snow thanking you for coming and watching this video, and I hope uh, it was, you found it informative. If you have any questions, uh, write them down below, ask me, and I'll get back to you and answer them promptly uh, about landscape photography or any other type of photography. And uh, I appreciate you coming along, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you again outside.